Coming up, hypnotists, exorcists, and incestuousness. Also, the coolest kicks in the cave, a fingertip numbing edition of Drinking with the Devil, and the long awaited return of Ask the Goat. All this and more on this toad popping edition of Kiss the Goat. I'm Cootie. And my name is X, and this is... Kiss Pacha the Le Goat. Capra. What the hell are you doing? What do you mean? Dude, we've been doing this for over 50 episodes now. We always say kiss the goat at the same time, and you're blowing the whole intro. I did say kiss the goat. I just said it in Italian. Pacha Le Capra is kiss the goat in Italian. Oh, well, that's cool. Why the fuck would you do that? Because in this episode, we're covering the 1974 Italian flick, The Antichrist. And there's actually goat kissing in this film. Well, it's sort of a goat kissing. It's a very special kind of goat kiss. (laughs) Yeah, well, we'll talk about that later. You know, when a woman and a goat like each other very much... Nope, you just derailed my regular, I'm introducing the show, train of thought. So how am I supposed to talk about the shrine to satanic cinema, or heavy creaking doors, or dark energies, after you threw that linguistic curveball at me? I mean, you could do it in Italian. Uh, Okay, so let's try this then. Se un colione. Ooh, that's got an international feel. What does that mean? You're a dick. Hey, this is episode 52 of Kiss the Goat, and welcome to it. Our special friend, Mistress Stephanie, has been saving news clippings and a leather-bound photo album for the last few weeks. Toss that thing over here, Steph. (laughs) Nice catch. Yeah, bad throw. All right, well, it's time for The Devil is in the Details, our roundup of snippets of Satan stuff. All right, so we got to talk about Lil Nas X. What? Lil Nas X. What? Who? The rapper. Which one? Lil Nas X. Who the hell's Lil Nas? No, Lil Nas X. Jesus, I'm right here. What are we doing? God damn it, Lil Nas X, not Lil Nas, comma, X. Oh, okay, I know who that is. Ooh, he made a bunch of Christians mad. <laughs> yeah, well, not only is Lil Nas X rip-roaringly gay, but the video for his song Montero featured Lil Nas X giving Satan a lamp dance. Also, the rapper introduced something called Satan Shoes, which allegedly were manufactured with one drop of human blood. And that really caused a kerfuffle among a few circles. Well, the Christians were mad because, of course, here's a gay black man giving the devil an ass-crack conga in a version of hell that would make 1980s Ridley Scott pop a woody. That video is an amazing watch. Aliens with heads that are sort of phallic. Some pole dancing. Some Chris Tucker from the Fifth Element cosplay. And the song is pretty great, too. Well, yeah, unless you're a conservative Christian. Many of them gone public and accuse Lil Nas X of promoting Satanism. Pastors, pundits, and even South Dakota Governor Christy Noem have criticized the rapper on social media. So wait, don't Christians think queer folk are headed for eternal damnation? So why the screaming shit would they be mad about a video where a gay person goes to hell? Why isn't that like a fucking recruiting video for these people? But wait, there's more. Along with the song, Lil Nas X dropped the Satan shoes, which were actually revamped 1997 Nike Air Max sneakers. According to the description, the black and red kicks contained 60 cc's of ink and one drop of human blood. The shoes were a limited edition with only 666 pairs being offered up for sale, and they sold out in less than one minute. 
Nike not only disavowed any connection with the shoes, they sued Mischief, M-S-C-H-F, which I assume is pronounced Mischief. There's no vowels. Just run all that shit together. The art collective that designed the shoes for trademark infringement. Now, the suit was dropped in exchange for providing a cash refund to everyone who bought the shoes. You know, when I have blood in my shoes, it usually means I didn't wear thick enough socks. All right, look. Back in 1977, the glam rock band Kiss added their blood to the ink that was used in a super special Marvel comic book about the band. And it might have made some Christians mad, but I was, you know, alive at the time. I was just relatively young. I don't remember any backlash about that. Uh, I mean, Christians hated Kiss and said the name stood for Knights in Satan's Service. Not true. But as far as I know, and I'm willing to be wrong, people just thought, well, that's Kiss. They do shit like that. So people may have been mad for about two weeks after the news broke, but after that, nobody cared. And then Kiss started playing disco. (laughs) So why did some people get mad at Lil Nas X and not Kiss? Shit, I don't know. Short memory, I reckon. Or, and I could be oversimplifying this, but it might be because the members of KISS were white. Oh, and straight. And as far as Lil Nas X is concerned, he seems to be pretty amused by the whole religious backlash. I spent my entire teenage years hating myself because of the shit y'all preached would happen to me because I was gay, Lil Nas X tweeted. So I hope y'all mad. Stay mad. Feel the same anger you teach us to have towards ourselves. The rapper knew that he was going to piss people off with his new release, and according to a March tweet, anticipated emerging as the winner in this particular battle. I had nine months to plan this rollout, Lil Nas X wrote. Y'all are not going to win, bro. Long-time listeners of Kiss the Goat know how Cootie and I feel about the queer community and the variety, which is wide, of other sexual preferences, gender nomenclatures, and people who decide to or not to fuck. We love y'all. Feel free to listen and hang out in our Facebook group or whatever. You're welcome around here. Bring it. Kinks, aces, buys, pans, all y'all. You're all welcome to kiss the goat along with us. This is an inclusive community, and all are welcome in the lot. Except pedophiles. Mm. And and zoophiles. Like, mm. don't, don't, don't fuck kids or animals. Oh, and cannibalism, and, you know, don't eat other people. That's it, though. I mean, those seem to be our boundaries. Yeah, so if you come to the Facebook group, which is a group on Facebook that you can pretty easily find on Facebook, especially if you search for groups, and you post about how you had sex with a kid and their puppy and then ate the kid and you include a photo to prove the events happened, we're going to remove you from the group. Those kinds of posts have not been a problem in the past, by the way. I just wanted to make that clear. And while it's true that you can ask us anything during the Ask the Goat segment of the show, and we absolutely encourage that, don't ask a question if you don't want the answer. I'm not going to lie. We're not going to lie. <laughs> well, that's the devil in the details for this episode. Dude, I want Satan shoes. I want Satan boots. Should we put those on our Kiss the Goat wish list? Should we create a Kiss the Goat wish list? <laughs> I wear a U.S. size 11. Well, and I take it eight and a half. Good to know. I also wear a size eight and a half shoe. <laughs> dirty. <laughs> hey, speaking of dirty, is that movie time yet? Because I want to talk about this weird satanic orgy and how conflicted I feel about this flick. Yeah, especially given the rant we just delivered, because there is a scene in which a goat plays a crucial part in an odd ritual which bears discussing. Stephanie, bring us drinks, and perhaps a a crunchy snack. Everyone else? Shh, it's movie time. It's the Antichrist from 1974, an Italian entry into the possession category of horror movie, which showed up a couple of years after The Exorcist. It was directed by Alberto De Martino, who mostly was known for his work in the Western and Polizio Tesci genres. I'm sorry, what was that last one? Polizio Tesci. Crime dramas. Lots of mobs and bad cops and guns and cars and testosterone so thick you can see it emanating from the actors like thick clouds of green pesticide. 
Carla Gravina stars in this movie, along with Mel Ferrer, Arthur Kennedy, and our favorite ballet instructor, Alita Valley, who played the stern Miss Tanner in Dario Argento's 1977 trippy classic, Suspiria. Suspiria. I like that movie. <laughs> like it? Dude, we have the out-of-print three-disc Anchor Bay version, the Blu-ray, and the 4K UHD copy. Yeah, it's pretty good. We have framed lobby cards. I've done Suspiria art that's hanging on the wall. And we traveled to Nashville to watch Suspiria on 35mm in the original Italian. We are not fluent in Italian. I know, I know. It's decent. We went to North fucking Carolina to see Goblin, just hoping they would play part of the Suspiria soundtrack live. And that was a fun trip. You have three Suspiria t-shirts. Okay, fine. God damn it. Suspiria is my all-time favorite movie. <laughs> well, should we put Suspiria merch on our wish list? Let our listeners start buying stuff for us? You know, this Suspiria talk has fuck all to do with the Antichrist, which was known in the States as the Tempter. However, I strongly suggest avoiding the Tempter cut because it is heavily edited. I don't know what the fuck they cut out, but I can well imagine, because this movie goes over the top with a gleefully unflinching spirit. There's tits and puke and everything you would imagine from an Italian possession movie. And more. The Antichrist cruises right over into some extremely adult situations that filmmakers would probably not be able to get away with today. So why does it suck? <laughs> I'm not completely positive it sucks, but you know, my, my opinion could be swayed. <sighs> Carla Gravina plays Apollida, which is a apparently just a family name, because I've never met anybody in my life named Apollida. It sounds like it should be a, like a Greek goddess. It probably is. <laughs> I'll have to research that. Yeah, look, look. <laughs> You've already started looking shit up on the show before. Why stop now? There's a precedent set. So Apollo's in a wheelchair, or at least she has some kind of, of walking disability. The film opens with them at a Stations of the Cross, I don't know what you'd call that, event? Carnival? I, you know, it's such a weird scene. Happening. It very much... It very, very much reminded me of, like, a um, a Pentecostal revival. Okay, wait. I've been to Pentecostal revivals, okay? And I've never seen any sort of statue inside of a fucking iron cage in the middle of the street. No, but you do have a pastor of some sort at the front of the church who is doling out doses of the Holy Ghost and healing. Well, that's true. Okay, I'll give you that. And there's a lot of screaming and a lot of rolling around on the ground, which happens in this movie, too. And mm -hmm. some people get up out their wheelchairs and start running up and down the aisles, and that happens in this movie, too. But not for everybody, because for some people, that shit don't work. There's the one dude who, does he actually touch the Virgin Mary statue? I can't remember. But anyway, he goes a little bit nuts, climbs up to the top of the cliff where there just happen to be ruins, because that's where you put ruins, is on a cliff. Italy. Yeah, because yeah, Italy. And he just jumps off of it, and it's one of the worst fucking special effects I've ever seen in my life. It's, <laughs> I don't you even just know how wish, to You wish it had been a dummy drop. Right? I it's, mean, so many other Italian horror movies did the fucking dummy drop, and it was amazing. Why did they not do it in this movie? No idea. What is important about this entire opening sequence, though, is that Apollo has daddy issues. Now, the reason Apollo is in a wheelchair is because she was in a car wreck. She was in the back seat, I guess, she and her brother. Yeah. But anyway, she was in a car wreck. Her daddy was driving. Her mama got killed. Daddy's moved on, and he's fucking Anita Strindberg. Now, I know you've seen her if you watch Italian movies. She's the one who's got the cheekbones that look just like freshly installed railings. They are just <laughs> sharp. And you, you know those just, like, curve around and, like, go into her brain. Just, like, fucking bone tendrils. They're huge. Her cheekbones she are... Is. She looks like she could play a lawyer in any kind of, like, crime drama television series. I'm pretty sure she was in Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key. Mm. I think that's where we've seen her before. Mm-hmm. 
So anyway, here's Apollida, and Apollida is just kind of the center of attention for a lot of people, including religious people, there are some in the family, and uh, hypnotists, which they know. So she goes, right? <laughs> She's just like, well, yes, I know a hypnotist. Um, <laughs> I've got his number right here. So the church can't cure Apollida. The hypnotist can't cure Apollida, but everybody's reasonably sure that her paralysis is psychosomatic. Jesus didn't help her, and apparently fucking Kreskin didn't help her. But during a session with the hypnotist, Apollida has flashbacks to a former life. So Apollida, apparently, is the reincarnated witch. The witch was burned, or killed, well, yeah, burned hundreds of years ago by the Spanish Inquisition, which, to be honest, nobody, nobody expected. expected. Nobody expected that. <laughs> yeah, but the, the woman that she's a reincarnation of is supposedly some kind of ancestor of hers. So that's kind of weird. Right. Yeah, so. Um, <laughs> I mean. <laughs> runs right? in the family. It's all in the family. But just as a side note. Apparently, Ippolita Maria Sforza was an Italian noble woman who lived from 1450 to 1535. So I guess it was like a noble name in Italy. So not really a saint or a goddess, but just somebody who... Noble woman. Okay, somebody who was just part of a noble family. Okay. Yeah, that's I guess so. I don't know. But yeah. She has daddy issues. She's struggling with this. She's fucking trying to find a cure for this. And the way that she gets introduced to this hypnotist is really fucking weird because they're having this dinner party. People milling about, drinking, making weird jokes. And um, she's sitting with a friend and they're doing palm readings. Like just hanging out at the dinner party doing palm readings. I don't know. Was that a thing in the 70s? It happened in Simon King of the Witches. Yeah, that's true. So maybe it was. Maybe it was. But you anyway, just, this guy won't. But you just don't normally drink. invite people from the Vatican to your party where you're doing palm reading. <laughs> well, her, was her uncle is like a fucking bishop or something? Something weird. like that, a bishop or a cardinal or not, some bird. I don't know. Yeah, but this guy walks up and her brother introduces him and he's like, "This is my friend so and so," and he was so intrigued when I told him about you that he just had to meet you in person. And she just looks at him and says, "You're a therapist, aren't you?" <laughs> just fucking stone cold calls his ass out. Well, he is a therapist, but. After the therapy doesn't really do a whole lot for her. What's funny is there is a scene where Apollo apparently renounces Christ. I say that's funny. <laughs> that's the kind of shit that I find funny. But she has this holy card, which is apparently of Christ, but he looks like some kind of weird frog monster. Looks like it's it's like if you took Jesus and just compressed him like 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 the tall man does in Phantasm, made like a Jesus Jawa out of him. That's what he looks like on the holy card. So Apollo throws it into the fireplace in her room and it immediately disappears and the fire goes out. So I think that's maybe some sort of the the devil like accepting her uh I don't know, nov, nov, novitiate I don't know. Is Did that? you see the giant cock in that picture, too? Oh, do you have a giant cock? Oh, yeah. Big Jesus cock. Really? Yep. Totally missed that. I was focused on his froggy face and the horns. Uh, and the... I missed the froggy face. I saw the cock, though. Oh, well, imagine fucking that. <laughs> <laughs> well, after that happens, she goes to her uncle to ask for help because he's a fucking bishop. Or something. Some kind of Catholic bird, yes. Yeah, steps. and it was a really weird conversation. Like, every conversation Hippolyta is involved in is really weird, because at first she seems, like, distressed and needing help, and then when she asks the person for help or when they come up and try to offer her help, she gets, like, really defensive and confrontational, and then it ends up being just this really tense, uncomfortable thing. Fucking Sagittarius. <sighs> That she is a fucking Sagittarius. Just this passive aggressive weird bullshit. Just like, oh hello, I'm very interested in talking to you. How are you doing? You're a piece of shit, and I hate you, and I hate myself. And that's it. That's every fucking conversation. Pretty much. But anyway, the bishop dude can't help her. He's just like. Your love for your father is way too possessive, and that's probably what flips her 
her bitch switch, actually. She's well, because like, Daddy's banging Anita Strindberg. Yeah, she can't handle it. You know, she who's got fucking tram cables for cheekbones. <laughs> So after this is when shit really starts to get weird. I mean, it is as if the opening sequence wasn't weird enough. Um, obviously, it starts to get weirder. And I'm not sure <sighs> this movie is such a fucking roller coaster. She lays down, right, to take like a nap or something. She doesn't want to be disturbed. And she has this weird kind of lucid dream sequence. Well, she's Am naked. Am I getting this right? Yeah, she lays down naked. She's, I don't remember her laying down naked, but what she was she definitely naked, naked well, in Well, she's naked her... at the end. Okay, maybe I'll cut. I'll fix that in post. Anyway, she lays down in bed. She ends up naked. I know that. <laughs> I wonder if she wasn't just naked in the dream sequence part. But anyway, she's, she's dreaming that it's this thing that's very much like a repressed memory like she's remembering this thing that's happening and in the dream sequence she's walking kind of through this wooded area up to this altar and it's surrounded by probably 30 or so couples just laying around fucking like you do in the like swamp just like some kind of weird deliverance music festival it was it really was only you know i don't remember anybody squealing like a pig but still there's an orgy going on she walks up to this stone altar, and there's a dude up there in, you know, this fucking – he actually looked pretty cool. He had this the horn mask thing on. The horn mask and the cloak and everything like that. But in the dream, remember, Apollida is actually kind of in the form of her ancestor because she's got the long blonde hair that her ancestor had. But when we flash back to Apollida in bed – actually having this dream slash vision she's got her regular short shitty mia farrow rosemary's baby ripoff hair yeah yeah her short cropped off red head um it but was, yeah was vidal buffoon the vidal buffoon <laughs> so he pops the head off of a frog he squeezes it in his hand. Until the head pops Until off. the head pops off. And then he puts the fucking head in her mouth. And she eats it, and we see her on the altar, accept it into her mouth, but then we flash back to her on the bed, having the dream, and she's doing this almost obscene kind of mock chewing of, of, the, of the toad head, or whatever. Just... <laughs> You know when they teach you in school, don't don't chew with your mouth open. She don't care. She she yeah uh, she don't care. But she's so she goes straight from eating the toad head to licking a goat ass. They bring a goat up to the altar and they lift up its tail, and there it is for everybody to see. Just big old goat brown eye, and she, and on the altar, Apollo just leans her head right into it just gets all up in there but then what we see is apollo on her bed in present day and she's got a tongue like gene simmons it is long and pointed and i swear she just licks the air for a good three four minutes and that's you know in the vision that's licking the goat ass we don't get to see that we just get to see her pretend to lick the goat ass which i guess still counts as licking goat ass it's an implied goatee rim job. <laughs> it is goatolingus. Goatolingus. Yeah. So this this whole dream sequence, of course, she gets fucked by the dude in the horned mask. Too. But it's her first time, too. So the horned dude guy takes her virginity, and you can see her in the bed. Her legs are spread apart, and her knees kind of go up in the air and it doesn't look like she's doing that herself it looks like somebody else is doing it and you can see like knee prints in the mattress mm -hmm. so once she gets boned by the by, by the dream high priest or whatever that's when things get fucked up because she's super horny from then on out in this movie and she just starts walking she doesn't she does she, she doesn't, can fucking walk now she doesn't need a wheelchair she doesn't need a cane so she is horny and ambulatory <laughs> And that's probably not a good thing for her to be. I don't, I don't know. Fuck it. Maybe it is. I don't know. She takes a little road trip, goes out to the country, decides to go to a... What, does she take like a tour of a museum or some shit? It was ruins. It's always ruins in Italy. Oh, yeah. They've got a lot of those about, you know. She makes eye contact with some guy 
Some who, kid. Kid's like fucking 17, 18 years old, maybe. Right. But she doesn't even say anything to him. She just kind of looks at him and, I don't know, I guess one of those come-hither looks. No, she starts rubbing his dick through his jeans. That'd do it for anybody. If that's not come-hither, I don't know what is. <laughs> <laughs> but then she leaves him for dead. Yeah, I don't know if she fucked him or not, but the next time oh, we bullshit. see the kid, you do too. his head's turned around backwards. I am absolutely positive that she fucked him and then broke his neck. She probably did. She probably did. I would have. Boy, I'm glad I didn't go on a tour of the ruins with you 12 years ago. <laughs> Shit. But my question is, do people do people do that? Do people just like go on crazy bus tours, fuck somebody like buy a ancient wall or a decayed crypt would that really say anything does that happen i i i don't know i've never done that well i haven't either that's why i'm asking i guess there's a lot of shit i hadn't done but you know also breaking somebody's neck after i fucked him i've never done that yeah yep she kills her rando and then later on she fucks her brother we're pretty sure she fucks her brother oh it's no we know she fucked her brother we know she fucks her brother we didn't get to see the brother fucking, so we don't have empirical proof that it happened. But I'm positive that that happened. I'll, I'll explain later why. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I know that happened. Anyway, <laughs> she also ruins a perfectly good dinner party, and this she does this a lot. So when she's possessed, one of the main ways that she reveals that she's possessed is she just eats loud. <laughs> she does. She's like, the, like at a dinner party, and she starts shoving cold cuts into her mouth, and there's meat flying out of her lips, and mashed potatoes, and... And she's every... spitting it out, too. It's almost like she can't eat it. Like, she wants to eat it, but she can't. Like, she wants to consume it, but not actually ingest it. She just chews and spits. Yeah. Which... <sighs> what she does chews and spits i don't have anything to say about that she chews and spits that's it <laughs> but she does that three or four times in the movie where it's just like hey apollo do you want a sandwich yeah <laughs> it's just this weird kind of it's not even reverse peristalsis it doesn't get that far it's just oh, no. i'm gonna make this into some kind of saliva goo meat and then hurl it back out <laughs> Well, at this point, Miss Tanner is really, really fucking worried for Hippolyta. So she decides to go to some, I don't even know who the fuck this dude is. He seriously looks like a roadie for Jethro Tull. It's like a cobbler or some shit. I don't know, but apparently he is renowned in the village for having some sort of powers he raises pigeons or something i don't fucking know i think he but, raises pigeons and teaches them how to fix shoes oh he might he's a pigeon cobbler he's a... <laughs> anyway she she goes to him to ask for help for Apollita. this guy is incompetent to the nth degree it's like calling in an instagram wiccan to try to protect you from some voodoo uh, voodooan person who put uh, the voodoo on you like <laughs> it's it's seriously dude is amateurish at best i'm trying to think of of, of another metaphor for that <laughs> you could probably think of a better one no i like your voodoo voodooan that was <laughs> Oh, good. This, this voodoo and voodoo. It's like calling somebody who's really good at making Lego Star Wars figures to build you a house. <laughs> there you go. That's pretty good. The thing that really bothered me about the amateur exorcist here, you know, Father Father Harass, um, one of the ways that he tries to drive the demon out of Apollo is he's got, it's not even a voodoo doll, but it's like one of those tiny figure drawing models you know it's got like the jointed arms and legs it's yeah relatively articulated so he pulls that out and kind of waves it around at her and she's all like what is this what is this but what this asshole does is he shoves one in the top of the figure's head he shoves one in one of its tits and then he shoves it right in the run the crotch I, like what was he trying to do what good does that do anybody does no good. None. So I mean, she fucks up his day big time. Yeah, she fucks up his day horrible. Yeah, like <laughs> like pukes in her hand and shoves it down his throat. And makes him lick it. Makes him lick it. Then, like, her arm fucking disappears from off her body and then comes out in midair and starts choking him. It's fucking weird. 
I just can't figure out why would the voodoo pin in the cooter? Why? I st- I don't know, man. Maybe he was trying to stifle her overactive sexuality that had suddenly blossomed since she got nailed by the horned guy. Well, I figure, you know, if your tit hurts and your cooter <laughs> hurts and all of a sudden you've got a fucking headache, you're probably not going to be balling anybody. That's probably accurate. All right, so that happens, and she sends him off scurrying, whatever. And then her uncle, who's like a – yeah, he's a cardinal with the Vatican or whatever. He's a cardinal. He's one of those – He's one of those guys who, who who has the, the neat costumes. He's like a, a step above a, just a standard priest, I guess. Right. He's like super priest. Yeah, like supervisor priest or something. <laughs> he comes in to talk to her, and she says, oh, by the way, my ancestor – said really mean things to your ancestor right before my ancestor was executed by the Spanish Inquisition. So because you were pissed at my ancestor, you damned them to hell and wouldn't let their soul escape. And that's why now I am possessed by that person. It's convoluted. And I'm probably not saying it right. I don't even remember what the fuck she said during this scene. So that's probably more accurate than what I could come up with. Why is there so much reincarnation in this fucking family? I don't know, man. Like in the same family even. Right? (laughs) So this is a family that you've got a whole bunch of of reincarnated spirits and you've got some taboos already. You've got the incest. You've got the eating toad heads and licking goat anus. Hippolyta's fucking unhealthy obsession with her dad right this is not a stable family but my question that i'm wondering to myself is i i've already come out against zoophilia and pedophilia pedophilia which i don't know we don't know how old that dude in the in the ruins was he may have been 28 he may have been 12 i don't know nah. so what it is about these activities that just really pisses the church off and i have a, and i have a reason for asking this is because she exhibits all these taboos, including being incredibly wasteful of a very fine dinner. Mm -hmm. But then Hippolyta says that she's pregnant with her brother's child and that child will be the Antichrist. Because that makes sense. How does that work? Is it, I mean, maybe it's just because of the incest. I mean, you know, around here you just get a cross-eyed baby, but... (laughs) It doesn't make any sense to me that that would be the cause of her carrying the Antichrist is she fucked her brother and was mad at a 300-year-old priest. There's a lot of things in this movie that don't make sense. Like, why is the only thing that calms her down and, like, quiets the demon is the sound of church bells? Yeah, because that should just make her out of her mind. I, I mean... If you're carrying the Antichrist, I'm sure the last thing you want to hear is church bells. It's not like that's a fucking lullaby for the unborn demon fetus that you're carrying about. That's what I'm thinking. So the Uncle Cardinal Bishop guy calls in an actual exorcist from the church like a church sanctioned exorcist. And this guy is probably as ineffectual as the Jethro Tull roadie guy. Well, it looks like he's been riding on the back of a motorcycle for 50 miles, fell off, and then got up and got right back on. He really does. His hair is in a constant state of flux. (laughs) So, and there's, it kind of alludes to, I don't know if this is the, is another Vatican or another dude that killed her ancestor that she is reincarnated from, I don't know. Let's just assume everybody in this movie is the reincarnation of somebody else. <laughs> Let's just assume that all of these people have been related for years, which also goes in with Italian nobility. Hello, blue-blooded incest and all that good shit. So let's just think all these people know each other from way back. So probably, yes, he was like the chiropractor for the Inquisition guy who set Apollo's ancestor on fire and then who went to, I don't know, medieval Shoney's and got <laughs> some cream corn. I don't know. Well, and the interesting thing here, and I, I don't know if this is actually interesting or if I was just like, huh, that's unusual, is when that priest got to the house, he, he asked Miss Tanner to assist him. And the exorcism, like not the dad, not the brother, not the uncle, bishop, cardinal. I think the reason for that is because uh, the Miss Tanner person, Alita Billy, as the housemaid, she's probably the person who cared for Apollo the most. Daddy's busy with Miss Playground Slide. (laughs) Her brother is concerned, but he's got a vested interest in it because, you know, that's his. Because he fucked her. That's his baby, too. So it makes sense that they would bring her in to me. 
to me. Doesn't matter. It doesn't work even after all kinds of shit flying around the room and weird visions that they keep having and everybody's having like mass hallucinations. Apollo to... <laughs> Jesus. Is this the exorcism where she fucking levitates out of the window? She fucking face shifts out of her ties that have her strapped down to the fucking wheelchair. And yes, she levitates out of the fucking room. And, and then comes of... back in another window. <laughs> She does. Like she floated all the way around the house to come back in the other side. And then the priest and Miss Tanner just get on their knees and start praying as she runs flailing out of the house and into the street. The big question is, is she really possessed or is she just one of the X-Men? <laughs> that is a good question. She's but then a- we get... I mean, I was just going to say, and then we just get kind of a reenactment of the opening sequence. Yeah. Just her running through the street and she's screaming and crying and then she falls down in front of the big iron cross that's in the middle of town and her daddy pushes her face up on it and she touches it and then everything's fine yeah no possession uh the incest baby apparently just disappeared within her womb got absorbed leaving no trace nothing and everybody just walks away that's it that's it the end Okay, so that might be fucking dumb. (laughs) Well, now that we've discussed the Antichrist from hell to breakfast, let's see what people out there in the ether think of this movie. I mean, do we know any Catholics or anybody who was a participant in the Spanish Inquisition? (laughs) Probably not. Let's just see who picks up as we make our spectral phone call on the landline of the damned. Jump on the party line as we dial 666, the number of the geeks. Hello? Holy shit! It is legendary podcaster Jamie Sammons who picked up the landline of the damned. How are you, Jamie? I am doing great. How are you? We are doing great. I'm just so happy that you are on the show and decided to pick up the mysteriously ringing phone somewhere in the back of beyond. Happy. pick up a ringing phone. (laughs) Why, Why wouldn't you? Anyway... Let's talk about um, the Antichrist, which I know that you have sat through. <laughs> <laughs> That's a way to put it. Yeah, I did. I, mean, I sat through that. You did. You, you, it was a movie, and you watched it. I, that, is, that is all accurate. Okay, got to go. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming yes. on the show, Jamie. That was great. Um, <laughs> so if there is such a thing, what was your favorite part of the Antichrist? Do you know what my favorite part of that movie was? It was that creepy hallway with all the statues. Like one side of the hallway, the statues are looking at you if you're coming down this way. The other side of the hallway, the statues are looking at you if you're coming down the other way. Who would have that in their house, first of all? But I loved it. I thought that was – I mean, I would have that in my house because that was some creepy shit. That Every time they were in the hall and they were there a lot, I just (laughs) – Like, that is so, it's unique. I've never seen anything like it. So I loved that. I thought that was kind of like Big Trouble in Little Italy, wasn't it? (laughs) Now, was it it just me or were there, were they like murmuring in the background? Did did you guys hear that? Or was that just the soundtrack? Or was it supposed to be coming from the statues? Because I asked Brian and he's like, I don't know. But... (laughs) I thought I they turned every once in a while to see who was doing what, but I could be wrong about that. Well, I kept I kept waiting, and if they did, I missed it every time because I was like, one of these days, something's going to happen. Something's <laughs> going to happen with those statues. And so – and I was like, did I miss it? Did something happen and I missed it? Which is entirely possible because that would have been really creepy, but then at the same time, maybe they would have thought that would have been obvious. I don't know, but – God damn it, Jamie. Don't make me want to watch this movie again. (laughs) I've already watched it like three times. Uh, Oh, my God. Really? (laughs) Yes. It took us that many times. The first time we watched it, we were just so fucking tore down drunk. Neither one of us could remember the last half. (laughs) 
probably the best way to go. And then the second time we watched it, he fell asleep halfway through. So then we had to watch it again <laughs> sober. And I think you even watched it again after that, didn't you, honey? I did. I, I, I had to because I couldn't remember a damn thing that happened. <laughs> and I was trying to get details straight, and I realized that there's no way to get details straight. No, Not no. even – it's like I would I would turn around real quick to do something, and I'd look back up at the TV, and there's Mel for wear wearing that big fucking collar like he's on a deck of cards. And I didn't understand <laughs> – I understand what happened. I don't know how we got to that point where he looks like yeah. – that whole scene was just like, this is a Dutch master cigar box. What happened? There, I, I will say, now, was this a first-time watch for you, X? Because I know Cootie had mentioned that she, this was a first-time watch for her. You've seen this before? I had you seen this on purpose? <laughs> All right, look. He's a bastard. I had this, I had this, like, what, 20 years, 25 years ago? It came as part of, when it, remember those old Anchor Bay lunchboxes that oh, yeah. came with DVDs in them? I had one with this movie in it. What? So I... <laughs> So I had already seen it, but it had been years, and I had forgotten um, about it. Yeah. Oh well, I mean, I, that makes sense. I uh, I did really like I, – I, okay, it's going to sound like everything I liked has to do with set dressing, and that's pretty much true because I love the, the, the whole scene in her bedroom that had uh, – like, it would change, you know, um, it would – it would be like a mural, and you with, mean that, with, like like the double process shots when she was having the lucid dream about the uh, yeah. The you tokens. mean that Rosemary's Baby part? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah and the and the majority the, the majority of the film, I was going okay. Exorcist, uh, Rosemary's Baby. Exorcist, Rosemary's Baby. Exorcist. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I did like the fact that it would be a mural. You know, when it was just regular bedroom and then it would change to, to like windows and or it's like the lighting behind it. would It was very creative. And I was like, wow, they put a lot of effort into the look of the film, at least as far as the sets are concerned. But I don't know that they really put a lot of effort into much else. Um, but we did have an amazing orgy scene uh, with some. I'm just going to say it. There's some goat asshole licking going on. You know, as far as I'm concerned, the entire movie could have taken place in that weird kind of dream sequence where she's remembering that orgy. And I would have been okay with that. But just give me an hour and a half of that. I would have been fine with that because I, that, that whole sequence, it was, it was like a twisted Eden is what it reminded me of, you know, and they were, uh, and it just it was pulling from imagery from so many different witchy things and satanic things um not just not films necessarily but you know paintings that you've seen or or I don't know I liked it I thought it was very inspired um that that's a good word for ripping things off but yeah. the, <laughs> But then, you know, we get to that whole, oh, they bring in the goat. I'm like, oh, they're bringing in the goat. And then they're bringing it up to the bed. And I was like, oh, this is funny. What if she kisses the goat? I actually made that joke. I I said, what if she kisses the goat? And then, like, they turn the goat around and back. I was like, what the hell? And then (laughs) she goes in. And I'm, what the fuck am I watching? And then the, uh, the, but then, of course, you don't actually get the up-close shot of the actual goat licking is just then you get to see what's going on in present day when you know the the woman who's flashing back and she's just lolling and just blah, 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 all over you know <laughs> and we were just dying like we were cracking up oh like i have never that is one thing i can say i have never seen ever and probably will never again i'm all right with that but it, be a reason for that, yeah. <laughs> like, what just happened? But okay. Um, uh-huh. But then I was, I kept finding myself going, you know, this is no dream. This is really happening. You know, uh-huh. I, I kept quoting, you know, better movies while I was watching <laughs> this movie. But uh, there were some hilarious bits, like uh, when she brought the. Uh, the aunt brought the magic man in to try to cure her. And then he gets nudged by the piece of furniture. Um, 
Was it him or was it the Ferrer character? I don't. Or no, it was. I think everybody got nudged by Ferdinand. And then it's just a movie. piece of her just comes flying across the room and just boop, just barely touches him and knocks him over. Like, oh, you guys, I would have left that out. Like, if you can't make it look convincing. I think everybody just, just got goosed by a divan in this movie. <laughs> just, <laughs> freak! oh, shit, it's the dresser. <laughs> oh, and that cheeky bit where, like, he pours the salt around her wheelchair and then she just, like, ha, 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 and rolls at it. <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> that stupid son of a bitch. He poured salt all the way around her wheelchair and then just went stomping through it like nothing, just kicking oh, the yeah. fucking boundaries away. Oh, the Winchester boys would have had his hide. Well, and I even said, I was like, he missed a whole bunch of spots. He, mi- I mean, it was just, he didn't care. Like, that is not how you do that. You just messed it up. Fucking amateur, man. That's what happens when you send in a fucking amateur to deal with a possession. And then he just noped right out of there, which was fantastic. But I guess, did you actually want to talk about what the movie's about? I'm sorry. I just kind of went off on a goat licking. No, 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 no. no. We, we, we are on the right path. She and I have already <laughs> dissected this thing, so we are we are good to go. <laughs> so oh, what do, you, <laughs> do you think, Jamie, do you think it's worth it for our listeners? Should they watch this movie or is it like eh, there are better ones <laughs> well there are definitely better ones uh, but i would put this right up there with oh man shoot what is that movie that's just a bunch of walking around downtown but the it's uh Haley mills sister um who Wait, gets what? pregnant What's beyond, beyond the door yes juliet mills yes yeah I would Ow. say I would watch this again the day I watched that again, uh, which actually I'd probably be more, more apt to watch Beyond the Door. But uh, that movie, <laughs> to me, the possession parts are just as goofy. Like they're just they are very goofy to me, but, you know, but entertaining in a way. Like, honestly, there are I didn't hate my time with this movie. I would say if you've never seen it, I would at least give it a shot just so you can say that you've seen it. I mean, it's not going to not going to hurt you. It, oh, where else are you going to get a goat rim job, right? Right. Well, you know, the Antichrist could have benefited from having a voiceover by Satan like Beyond the Door does. Yeah. <laughs> Or a kid do drinking pea I, soup do you really from a. I think I would save your life. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I do have a question though. What is it with Arthur Kennedy and seventies Italian movies? Like I, like um, what's the Let Sleeping Corpses Lie, where he plays the cop, um, and he has some. I'll kill like, you, you fucking hippie. Yeah, you long hair. But he has almost almost a, an Irish accent in that film. It's kind of weird. But uh, but he just, I'm like, you're better than that, Arthur Kennedy. What are you doing? <laughs> Mel Ferrer's better than that. And he's in this movie. I think what it is is these people had uh, mortgages yeah. <laughs> that they had to pay. And that's why Arthur Kennedy kept showing up. Mel Ferrer kept showing up. Um, they're... Uh, Jesus, Carl Malden was in the Cat of Nine Tales for reasons I've never quite understood. James Franciscus, all over the place. Very strange. Well, uh, I was talking about that with Brian, and he's like, you know, he's like, well, he's like, they even addressed that in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I'm like, well, you know, that's true. He's like, you know, when you're when your star starts to fade, then, you know, you go to the foreign market and you're a big deal over there and they'll, you know, pay you money to do things and you got to pay bills. It's just it's always interesting to me because I find myself thinking like, for instance, when I was watching this film, I'm like, I do every time Arthur Kennedy would be on screen. I'm like, uh, now, what did you think? What was going through his mind when he was doing this film? Was he going, oh, this piece of trash? Like, did he did he feel like it was beneath him or did he have a good time with it? It was, you know, very difficult to <laughs> tell but i you know I, I have to wonder these things you know like do you regret that and if you were to see him on the street and ask him about it would he slap you across the face for bringing it up i don't know um i don't think he'd remember doing it he'd just be like uh, well there was just one movie yeah. where i played a chess piece <laughs> <laughs> oh you know what else was really fun the dinner scene 
Oh. <laughs> I uh, I I enjoyed the hell out of that dinner scene. That was something else. <laughs> and then after, but it, the best part were people's reactions because she's just losing her shit. She's being all possessed. She's throwing shit around the room. She's, I mean, something is clearly wrong. And then you've got people going, huh? You think something might be wrong with her? Like, <laughs> she's spitting and snarling. She can't eat the food. Like, what's the matter, dear? <laughs> Why are mashed potatoes coming out of your nose? (laughs) Like, well, we have to have proof for the church. I'm like, I think you got it. (laughs) Ah. What did you? (laughs) What did you think as far as an acting role? What did you think of Carla Gravina's tongue? I think it should have deserved its own credit. I believe you're correct. Uh, That is for for sure. Uh, you know what I wish I okay you have the scene where when she uh, the first time she gets possessed and she can walk right the first thing she does is jump in her car which by the way she was driving prior to that and I was like well that's a neat contraption is that like a car for paralyzed people like that she controlled with the with the because you know she told the her brother she's like we got to get out of here take me out of here and then the next thing you know, they're in the car and she's driving. And I'm like, oh, all right then. So it looked like she had like some kind of steering wheel that she could control the speed with this. I don't know. It was it was weird, but I was very confused. But that was through the majority of the film. But anyway, then when she's finally able to walk, she runs out to her car and she goes driving until she finds this hot 15 year old I'm like, what so young jail bait man what is happening so anyway she, she there's that whole seduction scene which honestly is i was kind of snickering through uh what seduction like, how is that seduction she gave well, a wrench around through called. his jeans <laughs> right it was and then i thought like you know if that was some creepy guy who was creeping on a a class of young girls that would not at all be okay. Like that would be completely different and it would be really disgusting. Now, while I thought this was disgusting as well, I was just, I'm like, he's like, yeah, let's go. And I'm like, no, what's wrong with you? Don't know who this is. And she's like your mom, like quit it. (laughs) But anyway, so then she ends up, you know, having sex with him and then, you know, kills him. And I was like, you know what? okay, is this what we're going to be doing? This will be fun. So she's she's going to, like, I get, and I even said, I was like, okay, I get it. There's a pattern. Every time when when the, when the she's actually possessed, she can walk. And then when she can walk, she goes out and does all these earthly things that she can't normally do, and then she ends up killing people. This is going to be fun. Never happened again. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, well, shit. <laughs> there that went, but I thought it was going to be interesting. And I think it would have been interesting if they had, discuss, you know, uh, explored that a little bit more. Just what she would do while possessed with, you know, the the ability of legs. But instead, we get this little girl finding her face down in a field and then dragging her by the car. Dragging like, her by the arm. Priceless. God. Instead and of then, that, we get her internal struggle with her possessive love of her father. It was like... This oh is boring. God. Oh, my Lord. Oh, and then at one point, because I think Brian missed the part where they actually referred to him as her father. And he's just like, he's like, you know, what? and I had came, I'd gone, to, ran to do something. I came back and I was like, what happened? And he's like, her significant other. And I was like, what significant other? And he's like, the older guy. And I'm like, that's her father. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, that's creepy. I'm like, no shit. <laughs> but he's like, well, then why was she? Why was she rubbing one out while he was having sex with that other woman? And I'm like, dude. That Discovery Channel is that. This movie, that's the problem, I think, is they took so many different things and threw them at the wall to see what would stick. Mm-hmm. And um, nothing really did. And not even when you lubed it with spit. The, <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, And that's a shame because I think it could have been interesting if they had taken the time to explore one thing and, you know, just see where see where it goes. But instead, it was just all over the place. It was a mismatch of all these things. And plus, she was rude. Like that little girl dragged her to the car and she didn't even say thank you. I was mad. 
right? I'm like, please, thank you. You're a bitch. You know, <laughs> self-absorbed twat. So but, uh, in ten, I don't mean to interrupt, but in ten words or less, describe Anita Strindberg's cheekbones. <laughs> That's easy. Sharp. <laughs> what was I going to say? Well, I got ten words. Hang on a second. <laughs> All right, that's not 10, but whatever. They will cut your ass to pieces. <laughs> Boom. Thank you so much. There you go. Much more elaborate. Thank you. <laughs> or, you know, sharp. <laughs> so I want to talk about the taboos in this movie real quick because a lot of it sort of makes sense, but then doesn't because obviously you've got the toad head eaten. Oh, I forgot about that, and that was prominent. It was. Now, not a real toad. Obviously, some kind of weird toad-shaped balloon that they had just filled up with goop that looked like Argento blood. But you got the toad head eaten, and then the blood licking, and then, you know, the goat, frumious, whatever, in the nether regions. But then rim you both, job. Rim job. You, 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 got, the, you, you got the go to lingus. But then... <laughs> Then you've also got the fact that she fucked her brother, so you got incest in there. And what we were trying to figure out is exactly how does getting pregnant by your brother mean that you're carrying the Antichrist? Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, it, well, okay. <laughs> I mean, no, it it, it just it doesn't, you know. I, but also, I love her brother's reaction when she tells the father. She's like, oh, he, yeah. He fucked me, and now I'm having the Antichrist. And then the brothers over there just like, no, 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 that didn't happen. No, that didn't happen. You know. <laughs> but no, I don't. Uh, I'm wondering. Maybe they used her. Maybe, okay. Maybe Satan used her brother's body as a vessel to deliver his seed. Um, I that don't just know. that just sounds like rape with extra steps. Yeah. <laughs> well, did anybody ever <laughs> accuse the devil of being efficient? <laughs> fair, fair cop. No, I got, I got nothing. But see, okay. if that would, if we were doing a, what didn't make sense about this movie, that probably wouldn't be the first thing that came to my mind. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was, I was entranced by the levitation scene. Oh. I was waiting for somebody to bring that up. Where she went out one window and then <laughs> came back in another window, and it looked like they had put her on a gurney in front of a 1970s weather map yeah. and just chironed the shit out of her. Was I that think, not fantastic? That was kind of amazing. And it was like, we're going to do that. Hey, you know that scene from The Exorcist where – where Reagan gets lifted off the bed. We want to do that, but what? Just wait for it. We're going to go out one window, and we're going to come in another. Totally different. <laughs> Rip off my ass. Uh, I That whole window thing with the, was it the priest or was it the the medicine man? The, the, that was like, he'd go to close the window and she'd open it, and then he'd close another window and he and she'd open it. And then he'd close the window and she'd open it. And he'd close the window and she'd open it. And then finally she just opened both windows. I'm like, why are we spending five minutes on her opening windows? There's like three exorcisms in this movie, dude. I lost count. I can't. Because <laughs> <laughs> you've got fucking Reb Tevia trying to come in and exorcise her. And then you've got her uncle, the cardinal bishop. And then... The fucking weird dude that's just been hanging outside on the streets outside their house, just stalking them for no real apparent reason. So, yeah, they all three try to get at her. And finally, I think just Satan just got bored. He's yeah. probably like, <laughs> you know what? I'm out. Like, <laughs> I got better things to do. <laughs> Italy, man. <laughs> oh, my I'm gonna God. Go visit, I'm going to go visit uh, uh, Juliet Mills and see what's going on. Right. Is Richard Burton available? <laughs> oh, that's funny, too, because that whole every time she would do the regressive hypnosis stuff, uh, Brian would call back to Exorcist 2. Oh, which reminded me that I actually liked the score to this film as well. 
But I thought I think the score to Exorcist 2, which, by the way, is the only thing I like about Exorcist 2, but I think the score to that film. But they were both done by Ennio Morricone, which I did want to bring up, is the reason I like the score to this film is it was done by Morricone. And I think that was pretty interesting. You know, so I to sum it up, I, I liked the the a lot of the set dressing and I liked the music, the stuff they filled it with. Not so much. But I did think there were some at least interesting visual and auditory things going on. Mm, Fair enough. Yeah. So would you recommend it to people? Did we did, did we get to that point? We did. Uh, I think I said, I think I said, yeah, I really feel like people need to just watch it once just because it is that batshit. And I would recommend a at least a one-time watch just to see if nothing else just so you can see what we're talking about you want to be able to get the joke <laughs> and if i were listening to this podcast the first thing i would do is run out and watch this movie because i would have to know what you were talking about i feel like this is the kind of movie that you inflict on people that you invite over to your house and like, the, well the ones you don't want to come back <laughs> Come over, have some drinks. I'm going to show you this film. (laughs) So like when the Jehovah's Witnesses come over? Yeah, or that one neighbor that you did the one nice thing for, you know, like a year ago, and they won't leave you alone since then? Yes. (laughs) They keep knocking on your door Saturday, like 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Can you give me a ride? No, asshole. I loaned you my snow shovel one time. Oh, boy. It was fun, though. I'm not I I did have a good time. I'm glad I watched it. And I still say I would do a double bill of this and beyond the door. If I were heavily drugged. (laughs) And I think it would be I think that would be a good time. Now, when it comes down to it, trying to watch The Antichrist without being altered in some form is a daunting task, although admittedly. I attempted to watch the movie four times before we recorded it, and I fell asleep every single time. (laughs) How drunk were you? Well, on a scale of one to Oliver Reed, I was probably about an Albert Finney. Is that that good? (laughs) Sure shit wasn't bad. Well, should you choose to engage in masochistic activities and watch The Antichrist for yourself, we're here to help you get through it. By getting plastered. It's time for America's favorite drinking game, Drinking with the Devil, where your love of bad movies meets your disdain for your own liver. time Apollo looks pouty and petulant. Oh my god. <laughs> Drink every time you think, fuck, how many freckles does that woman have? <laughs> no wait. Are you saying that you can take her freckles and kind of connect the dots and it say six 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 on her butt? I hope so. I hope so too. <laughs> Drink Every time you see ugly neckwear, like an ascot or an ostentatious pendant, something that makes Freddy from Scooby-Doo look reserved. (laughs) Drink every time you just want to bitch slap her brother. Oh my god, is he the worst? He's the worst. He seriously looks like he's always coming back home from a tennis game. (laughs) Drink! Every time you see a piece of religious iconography. Drink. Every time you wonder what the fuck is happening in this movie. And that should start right after the opening credits, to be Uh honest. (laughs) And here's your Grandmaster Challenge. Drink! Whenever you're reminded of a much better film. Oh my god, this movie is derivative as fuck. Well, remember folks, we here at Kiss the Goat do not condone underage drinking or alcohol abuse. However, they've they've always always worked for us. us. Now that we're coming towards the end of the episode and Cootie and I are both good and lit, 
it's time for us to commence with the correspondence. Damn, Skippy. Once again, it's time for Ask the Goat, our question and answer segment where we answer your questions and you question our answers. Stephanie, bring forth the letters. As Cootie rummages through the malevolent mailbag. Rummage, rummage, rummage. Please remember that you can ask us questions whatever you want by using three, count them three, methods of communication. If you have yet to do so, you can join our Facebook group, which is our group on Facebook. Honey, we, we've already talked about the Facebook group. We have? Well, it was early on, but yeah. Fine. Uh, have I talked about sending us an email at thegoatofmadness at gmail.com? Because they can do that, too. Nope. And that is a perfectly viable way to get in touch with us, as is following us on Twitter at the goat of M-A-D-N-E and the number one. That's so stupid. I know. Just look for Kiss the Goat on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably more than one feed with that name, but you'll know it's us when you see it. Send us questions on practically anything. There's nothing we won't answer, and there is no such thing as TMI here in the Shrine of Satanic Cinema. Yeah, we're transparent and authentic and shit. <laughs> so our first question comes from the infamous Mike Merriman. Welcome back, Mike says. Where can I send a congratulatory batch of hot buttered rum mix as a token of appreciation for your return? You know, Mike. You could send it straight to hell, Mike. Straight to fucking hell, Mike. <laughs> God damn it. <sighs> that was. You'll never live it down. I know. I'm so glad that I chose to put one of the most Christ and awful experiences of my life and record that for posterity. Me too. Oh, my God. Our next question comes from Matthew Tangen, the angry ginger himself. What's up, Matt? Matt, Matt wants to know if, what film off the top of our heads has our favorite representation of witchcraft. Our favorite, huh? Not necessarily like the most realistic, because we know that doesn't happen in Hollywood. <laughs> no, it does not. But our favorite. He says favorite. Let's go favorite. Okay, so my favorite then would be Practical Magic. You just like the self-stirring margaritas and shit. I, well, it's self-stirring tea. But yes, I love the aunts. I love the midnight margaritas and the brownies for breakfast. And I know at its heart it's a rom-com, but I love that movie. And I want that house. Not just the house. You want that hat. Oh, fuck yes, I want that hat. That big Stucker Channing hat that she wears in that movie? I want to be Stucker Channing. Should we go, Maybe. Ahead, should we go ahead and put that on our wish list? Yep. <laughs> For real. <laughs> I shopped it. It's expensive. I uh, figure. Well, somebody out there's going to like us well enough to get you that hat. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next, Rolf Pickler wants to know... Nanny B Baylock, hot or not? You know, Nanny Baylock had a very distinctive style of dress, and she does love dogs. If we're going to take it back to that whole rom-com thing like Practical Magic. But was she hot? No. No, but she's more like the before version of a before and after picture. Like, yeah. you could imagine her being hot, but in, in The Omen, she just wasn't. She you needs know? a makeover. Look, she loves dogs. She loves kids. She's got a great personality, obviously. Well, She's need... very giving. <laughs> She's very giving. She just needed, I don't know, a little bit of eye makeup wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Jesus. Our next question comes from Chris Mounts. Twerking on Satan, good or great? Fucking great, dude. Are you kidding me? Right? Did you watch that video? I mean, how often does Satan get a lap dance? I don't, probably not often enough. I'd say he's got a reputation. That kind of goes ahead of him, which precludes him from getting a whole lot of, of you know, crotch action. That's why he spends so much time trying to get laid in devil movies. <laughs> See? There you go. If he could if, just, you know, get a good lap dance every once in a while and get a little... Maybe a know, little sloppy handy in the back room. Something. Something where yeah. he's got to be, you know, pulling his underwear off his dick an hour later to try to get it from being sticky. Uh-huh. He'd, he'd be all right. He'd be fine. It'd be okay. So anyway, yes, twerking on Satan gets two thumbs up from, from, from Cootie and myself. Well, our final question this time around comes from Misty Marchant. Hey, girl. She's doing some redecorating. When picking out paint colors for my soon-to-be goth flat, I've chosen this shade of green for the bedroom. Would Satan approve, or should I go with a darker shade? What? Sh shade? I have a question. What? <laughs> How the fuck am I supposed to see any shade of green on a goddamn audio show? 
Like, like can you know. just can you describe the shade of green? I'm really fond of like a sage green myself, but if you're going for a goth aesthetic, you might want to go for more of uh, I don't know an emerald green, maybe something a little darker. You know, my favorite shade of green is black. But <laughs> paint it black. What about, what about pea soup green? That would be in keeping with the movie we just watched. If you painted it over stucco, that'd be great. Mm-hmm. Get, get, get the get the chunkiness in there. Yeah, man, get some texture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Look, keep those missives and communiques coming, and maybe if you're a lucky duck, we'll answer your question right here, live on Kiss the Goat. Honey, we're we're not live. Oh, oh, fuck. Are we dead? Right. So that's going to do it for this episode of Kiss the Goat. A super special satanic thanks to Bo at Legion Podcast for giving us room to talk our crazy shit. Hey, join the Legion Podcast Patreon. Yeah. You'll get exclusive content from all the great shows on the network. Now, we're in the process of coming up with something ourselves that you'll only hear if you're a Patreon supporter. Yeah, we don't know what that is yet. But it'll be something. Hey, and while you're at it, subscribe to the Legion Podcast YouTube channel. You'll get to see some of your favorite show hosts live and in action saying things about other things. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We might show up on there one day, and won't that be something to tell the grandkids about? <laughs> it sure would be. Well, until next time, kids, I'm Cootie. My name is X. Saluta Sitana. God damn it, are you still trying to speak Italian? We. Oui. That's French. Uh, shit. Jesus Christ, I can't remember anything half the fucking time. But wait, there's more. Along with the song, Little Nikes, Little Not Lit. Yep. Little Nikes, Little Not. Little Nicky. Little, 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 little uh, for some reason, I don't want to pronounce the S in that. I just want to call him Little Nah. Oh, motherfucker, goddamn shit fuck. Okay. I had nine months to plan this rollout, Little Nas X wrote. Y'all are not going to win, bro. You just can't say his name, can you? I'm sorry. Let me do it again. <laughs> la, la, la. Lil. Lil. It, I think the Lil throws me off. Lil Nas X. Yeah, I get that. But, I mean, nobody's going to know who the hell Lil Nas X is. I know. All Three, right. Three, two. Actually, I was tired of squinting at my screen, so I clicked the little plus sign to make my font larger, and it, like, bumped me up three paragraphs ahead. Oh, <laughs> I, I know what happened. <laughs> Two, three, two. All right, so here's the thing. Carly Gravitch... <laughs> Fuck. All right, three, two, one. But Daddy's moved on, and Daddy's fucking a nitta, a nitta. God, fuck shit, damn it. Why can't I talk? Epilata, 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 I can't say it either. What the fuck is on in here? Okay. Three, two. Well, should you choose to engage in masochistic activities and watch the Antichrist for yourself, we're here to help you. We're here to help you. Hmm. Try it again. We're here to have that. We're here to have that. We're here to have that. <laughs> As Cootie rummages through the malevolent, I can't fuck shit, God damn it! let's do that again. I haven't said that line in like five fucking years. Oh. Was it that hard then? I don't know. I don't know. All right. Three. <clears throat> Tell you. I was saying, Apollina, she walks for two. She eats for two. She drinks for two now. Three, two. Her legs work just fine once she licked the goat ass. <laughs> Lick it. Lick it. <laughs> Wait, didn't the didn't the fucking horn dude say that to her after he spilled the toad blood on the altar? He's just like, Lick it. He probably did. <laughs> that old 
whole fucking sequence, dude. <laughs> oh, so many fucking bad tropes in this movie. Yeah. I still think it has something to say about the church's hypocrisy, but I don't fucking know what. I just, I just picked <laughs> scab, sorry. <laughs> That was he bad there. He was he good. That was he bad there. He was he good. He sees her cooter and just recoils. Now, I understand the priests are supposed to be celibate. Okay, I I know this, except when it comes to you know prepubescent boys who are in charge of the candles. Are they actually afraid to see a woman's vulva? I mean, should they actually be afeared to see a pussy? You're a priest. You deal with births and women all the time. If somebody shows you their labia, do you immediately back up against the wall like like you've just seen, I don't know, the last three minutes of Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island? What the fuck is happening right now? Be a fucking grown-up, you piece of shit priest! You know, what if she kisses the joke and uh, kisses the joke? I disagree. I think if there is a mother type in the omen, it's the dog. Well, no. Oh, God. Someone kicked me in the face. <laughs>